Hey, AP Environmental, it is me, Miss Willis, and I'm here to talk to you today about outdoor air pollution. Uh, we're gonna look at all the different classifications for outdoor air pollution and look at their sources. So let's go ahead and dive in. Before we get started, I wanted to spend a little time just reviewing the four layers of the atmosphere that we learned in our previous unit. So just remember there's four different layers of the atmosphere. Most of our outdoor air pollutants will be found in the troposphere layer. So remember it goes troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, and thermosphere. And in between each of the layers, you have what are called pauses. And of course, as you go up, through these layers, the temperatures fluctuate. So I also wanted you to remember about temperature inversion. So remember in normal conditions, the air is hotter, closer to the ground. And then as you know, warm air is less dense, so it rises and it goes up and gently cools with the colder air above. That's normal conditions. However, in a temperature inversion, what happens is that cold air comes in and it sits near the land. And this cold air is dense and it's heavy and it traps a lot of pollutants in that area. And then of course, warm air sits on top. So why am I talking to you about this with air pollutants? Well, it's important to remember that when we release these outdoor air pollutants, sometimes their concentrations can get much higher in temperature inversions or thermal inversion environments. So stop and take a moment and just think about some of the things you have heard that are in the air. So what are some of the outdoor air pollutants that you already know? And we live here in Los Angeles, so I'm sure you are very familiar with things that are in the air here. So just stop, reflect, and think. Now there are two types of air pollutants. We call them primary and secondary air pollutants. Primary air pollutants are ones that enter the air directly. So they're coming out of a smokestack or a tailpipe and they're entering into the atmosphere directly. Such examples of these are carbon dioxide, nitrous oxides, sulfur oxides, particulate matter, and hydrocarbons. Compare that to secondary air pollutants. These are pollutants that are released into the atmosphere and then they undergo a chemical reaction to become a different type of air pollutant. So for example, when you are making acid rain, which is a secondary air pollutant, uh, you release sulfur dioxide into the atmosphere. It mixes with water that's already there and it turns into a sulfuric acid acid like rain. So because it's mixing and reacting with something that's already in the atmosphere, we call that a secondary air pollutant. As you probably know, air pollution does affect human health. Um, some of the most common symptoms of exposure of air to air pollution are things like headaches and fatigue and sometimes nosebleeds. Also, if we're looking at the lungs, asthma is definitely an effect of air pollution or increased concentrations of air pollution. Um, there's also things like uh, mesothelioma that can occur with asbestos exposure in the air. And of course, there's always things like lung cancer and tumors that can grow from increased concentrations of air pollution. And what is also really awful about air pollution is that little kids are definitely more susceptible to the effects of air pollution. And this is because they do have higher metabolisms, which means they're breathing in more air to be able to break down their sugar. And then also their lungs are still developing, so they're still maturing and growing. And so if they're being exposed to air pollutants when they're developing, it could really hurt their development. So where does most of our air pollution come from? Unfortunately, it comes from the burning of fossil fuels. So please remember there were three that we talked about and they can be represented as cons. So coal, oil, and natural gas. And when you burn those, air pollutants are released. There are different kinds of air pollutants that are released, but they do go into the atmosphere and these are the ones that are causing the most trouble. 
Here is a pie chart of the countries that are releasing the most emissions of air pollutants. So you can see China and USA are definitely the biggest contributors to air pollutants, um, followed by pretty much the rest of the world. So let's talk about all the different types of outdoor air pollutants that you will see. So the first one is particulate matter, and there's two different sizes to particulate matter. There's 2.5 and 10. Now I'm going to show you a picture in just one second so you can see that it's actually just a difference in the diameter of the molecule. Particulate matter is sometimes known as aerosols, and some things that make this up are dust, lead, asbestos, salt, ash. These are kind of like the big particles of things that you see in the air. Where do they come from? Oh, a variety of places. Um, hair, dead skin cells, gas can release these. Fire, right? Every time you have a fire, you can see little pieces of ash and things that go into the atmosphere, as well as volcanoes. What is good about particulate matter is that when it does rain, these pieces usually settle out with the rain. Um, and they also um, kind of, I would say, get washed out from the rain. One thing that's kind of interesting is that scientists are finding that the more particulate matter we have in the atmosphere, it actually blocks incoming radiation, and it can lead to this phenomenon called global cooling. So instead of global warming, global cooling is being caused by aerosols. I really like this picture for particulate matter because you can actually see what it looks like. And particulate matter is usually the air pollutant that you can see. Like if you're looking at a ray of sun and you see little specks coming down in the ray, that's particulate matter. A second classification of outdoor air pollutants are nitrogen oxides. And you might be asking yourself, well, why are these bad? Well, they have been shown to inhibit plant growth, so they make it so plants don't grow as big. Um, they are a leading cause of asthma and photochemical smog, which is like that brown haze that you see in the air, and is also known to irritate the eyes. So where do nitrous oxides come from? Oh, a variety of places. The number one source definitely here in LA is the combustion of gasoline and coal. Also fertilizer application because it's high in nitrogen, it can vaporize and go into the atmosphere, as well as the burning of any crop residues or crop leftovers that you have from these farms. Here is a great picture of photochemical smog that we experience quite regularly here in Los Angeles. If you've ever looked out in LA and saw just a brown blanket of air in LA, that's photochemical smog. Like the name says, you do need sun in order to create it. You add some sunlight with some nitrous oxides that are primarily caused from burning gas here in LA, and you mix them with volatile organic compounds. We're gonna talk about those in a second. They are primarily made of hydrogen and carbon. You mix those all together and you get that brown haze. So here in LA, you will see photochemical smog on very bright sunny days because sun is needed in order to make that brown haze. When we're talking about smog, there are three questions I want to kind of emphasize and have you think about. So number one, what time of day does nitrogen oxide peak? When do you think their peak production is? So as I just told you in the last slide there, gasoline is burned and it releases nitrogen oxides into the atmosphere. So when do we see the most cars on the road? And if you're thinking to yourself, you probably see the most cars in the commuting hours, right? So in the morning and in the late afternoon, that's when you're going to see the most nitrogen oxide concentrations in the atmosphere, specifically here in LA. What season is smog in highest concentrations? Well, in order to make smog, you need sun, right? So where do we have a lot of sun? What season? And I hope you're thinking to yourself, summer, right? So you will see this photochemical smog haze a lot in the summer. Specifically, if there's a lot of people in their cars and it's very sunny. 
And then the last one, is this an urban or a rural problem and why? Well, um, in order to make nitrogen oxides, I told you one of the sources is burning gasoline. So if that's coming from cars, this is definitely an urban problem. Plus, there are so many more people in the areas um, where, obviously, in the urban areas. So you get a high concentration or high release of nitrogen oxides. This can be created in rural areas because another source of nitrogen oxides is the application of fertilizers, but it tends not to be so concentrated because there aren't a lot of people living there. The third classification of outdoor air pollutants are the sulfur oxides. And the sulfur oxides can be quite harmful to the environment because first off, they can mix with water in the atmosphere and make sulfuric acid, which comes down in the form of rain. It is known to irritate respiratory tracts, so definitely your lungs and your trachea, and it can degrade metal and stone. Where do these sulfur oxides come from? A lot of the sulfur oxides we have in our atmosphere here in the United States are coming from coal or oil burning for energy. They can also be released naturally through volcanic eruptions. What's kind of neat is that we have um, developed a process to remove sulfur oxides from coal before we burn it. And that's called flue gas desulfurization. But as you probably expect, it is an expensive process and it does take energy in order to do it. Our fourth outdoor air pollutant are the carbon oxides. So this includes carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide. Now carbon monoxide is a poisonous odorless gas and it reduces your red blood cells ability to carry oxygen. And so when you do get exposed to high levels of carbon monoxide, you internally suffocate because you cannot, the hemoglobin is not taking up your oxygen anymore. It's taking up the carbon monoxide. Carbon dioxide, as you probably know, the CO2, that is a greenhouse gas and it does cause global climate change. Where do the carbon oxides come from? Whew, anywhere, really. Anything that's carbon-based, which is pretty much most materials here um, that were alive or once living, uh, if you burn them, they are going to release carbon into the atmosphere. So the carbon that was in the material goes into the atmosphere. It mixes with the oxygen that's already there and it makes the carbon oxides. You can also get this from animal respiration. Like right now, as we're exhaling, we're releasing carbon dioxide. It comes from decomposition as well as volcanic eruptions. The fifth category are the volatile organic compounds, also known as the hydrocarbons or HCs for short. These include um, chemicals like methane and propane and butane, and they are highly volatile, very unstable compounds. Um, we do use a lot of these for energy purposes or heating, and they have been known to cause lung cancer and things like methane do contribute to global climate change as well as smog. So when you add these into the atmosphere with sunlight, with nitrogen oxides, you do get the creation of smog. Where are these VOCs coming from? Oh, tons of places as well. So gasoline combustion, flatulence, cow flatulence specifically, wetland decomposition, bacteria, they're breaking down things and releasing these gases into the atmosphere, as well as tree gassing. And what's kind of cool is that gas and formaldehyde, they sublimate at room temperature. So that means they evaporate. So if you just leave gasoline out, in in the nature <laughs> and you allow it to just sit there it's going to evaporate into the atmosphere so right there you have the source of volatile organic compounds into the atmosphere 
You may have heard that cows are a source of methane, specifically from their flatulence. So uh, some scientists are actually looking at ways to harness that methane and be able to use it for electrical purposes. So here, this is what you see. You see a cow on its back. It has a, um, a bag and inside it's collecting the methane that the cow is actually releasing. The last outdoor air pollutant, which is a secondary air pollutant, is called tropospheric ozone. Do not get this confused with stratospheric ozone. That is also made of just three molecules of oxygen, but it's formed a completely different way. So for tropospheric ozone to be created with this secondary process, you need the release of nitrogen dioxide. When that gets exposed to light, it will break apart into nitrogen monoxide and an, a free radical, an alone oxygen. It will mix with oxygen in the atmosphere, O2, and it becomes this O3, this tropospheric ozone. But remember, this happens in the troposphere. So because it is being released as nitrogen oxide and it's reacting with things that are already in the atmosphere, we call this a secondary pollutant. This can be really harmful because it causes coughing and inflammation of the lungs, the eyes, it causes headaches. It does lead to decre decreased crop growth as well as smog. So this one is not so good, but it is a good example of a secondary pollutant as well as photochemical smog that it's also a secondary pollutant. All right, everyone. Well, that concludes our outdoor air pollution talk. Have a great day.